in this video we invent a new term slapamunda slapromunda well anyway so I'm going to slap chop some Cawdor cultists but uh, as you can see a little bit of technical difficulties there towards the beginning anyway this time when I do my slap chop I'm going to push the highlights a little bit more and I'm going to use a pure white very sparingly at the end the um, it actually is quite fortunate that the gun fell off because you know what it gave me better access to the cultist now this is one of the uh, redemptionists from um, uh, House Cawdor and uh, as you can see here my first color is Bale oh, I'm sorry not Bale Red uh, Blood Angels Red I haven't gotten Bale Red yet so um, with the highlights pushed up as far as they are you can definitely see once the paint dries uh, you can definitely see the difference now in a couple of places here you'll note that I just kind of put a couple of uh, a couple of like um, just a, a smidge or two of red in certain places and I'm taking this yellow the E end in yellow and I'm mixing the two together now that was kind of a bid to make sort of an orangish look on some of the uh, the cloth but also to make it look maybe a little bit warm because these guys are obviously supposed to be pretty much trash goblins in the in the lore but the um, the yellow here I don't, this is not any of the new uh, contrast paints this is the end in yellow and I got this specifically originally for my um, my Escher gang and I think I need to get a different one because I don't really like how it um, I don't know it's it's got that orange color that kind of seeps into the recesses anyway uh, as you can see I took a mix of the yellow and the red and I put that on the shoulder pads and here I'm putting wildwood on the beard now uh, as you can see also I put um, the flesh tone on his uh, on his face there's no there's not a whole lot of, of uh, skin on these guys they're mostly robes and gloves and um, you know cloth or whatnot and now I'm using uh, snake bite leather for his uh, belt the pouches and the rope around his waist as well now that uh, will cover pretty much most of the um, the the uh, the base coats here uh, along with a little bit of green on one of the grenades at his belt now this time I'm going full-on lead belcher I'm not actually thinning it down like last time to let the uh, the gradient show through I'm just gonna go with the regular lead belcher and then I'm gonna wash it with null oil just to give it that depth now for this guy uh, as you can see once again I left some of that red on the his uh, top cloak the little drape around his shoulders and I kind of let that mix together in the yellow to to sort of add a little bit of interest in that area now the this is uh, once again this is my lead belcher that I've got the flow improver mixed into so it it paints pretty good straight out of the pot um, now I did uh, you know on his face or whatnot I, I had a hard time telling which part was face and which part was mask so at this point I'm just kind of guessing a little bit but it, it I mean it turned out pretty good so the uh, with the lead belcher now I I with this particular model the um, the sh I went with the shotgun that has the flamethrower on the bottom so I do it mostly in black and then I take that lead belcher and I go back and do some of the highlights or whatnot and once again as I said this actually kind of was fortunate it's fortuitous because it gave me better access to the front of the model it's sort of like assembly painting except for it's just one piece that, that fell off and actually funny enough uh, I had a series of mishaps with these guys as I was trying to paint them up. A lot of them fell off the base because a good number of them have action poses and they're walking. So it, it, if you put any pressure on them at all, they kind of topple over. So this is um, 
it's uh, this is the gold and that particular gold is the same gold I used on my storm cast and that's retributor armor um, I'm not actually going to wash that usually I'll put like a uh, fle Reichland flesh shade gloss over top of it to make it like a burnished gold but I think I'm just gonna leave the gold as is and let it let it sit now I did have uh, I did have some base issues with these guys, um, as you heard, you know, me trying to not get them to fall off their bases. But with this particular model, once again, all I did was do lead belcher. Now, this is something, this is an optional step. You don't have to do this. I actually went around with yellow and I did a sort of a, a edge highlight on the raised areas with a... Uh, Two different types of yellows actually so this is all citadel at first i tried Everland sunset but Everland sunset did not look good so i used uriel yellow and flash gets yellow to do the edge highlights on the top now on the bottom i use mephiston red and then i used a little bit of uh, wild rider red to give it a couple of small here and there highlights on just the edges of the robe and this Again, this is just a, a, a light edge highlight, so you want to use this sparingly. Don't put too much, don't go too crazy on it. And and especially with the flash gets yellow, I just did a couple of touches here and there. I didn't do the entire cloak in that flash gets yellow because that would have been way too overpowering on the yellows. So the red here, and, and once again, as I said, I'm doing a just a light, light edge highlight on the very tips of the robes and uh, with the, the Wild Rider. But with the Mephiston, as you can see, I did some of the raised areas as well to kind of put some contrast in those areas. Now, keep in mind, this is um, pre- flow improved and I also thinned it down with a little bit of water as well. And what that will do is that will deposit some pigment but not so much pigment that it's going to overpower and look weird so you just do the raised edges on the robe and the uh the chest piece there the just it basically any of the flaps that are raised up pretty easy very simple um it doesn't have to be too crazy it doesn't have to be too complicated and honestly you don't even have to go back over it with the wild rider around the around the edges of it so you know it's it's fairly simple just to leave as is and be done. So as you can see here, this is me using the Wild Rider in just a couple of areas around the around the edges, just you know, trying to bring a little bit of uh, a little bit of pop to the edges of the model. And this step is uh, completely optional. Completely optional. You don't have to do it at all. Uh, with Slap Chop, you can pretty much leave the model as is when you're done putting that initial layer on it and it'll be good to go so the the final touch here um, one of the final touches is I took some Cadian flesh tone or and I just painted it on the raised areas of his forehead and his nose and this is the uh, as I said earlier this is the null oil step so basically I mean that's it it's uh, pretty slap chop as always is just quick and dirty and um, I'll be honest with you if you throw a little bit of extra love into it it ends up looking really good you know a little bit of edge highlighting a little bit of touching up here and there and you're pretty pretty much good to go so this is the final product and uh, I'd like to say uh, thank you for watching I appreciate all my viewers and if you don't mind uh, subscribing and you can join me on Patreon and on Discord. I don't have anybody in my Discord yet, <laughs> but uh, anyway, thank you for watching.